Uh, year four. We're on to the final two chapters of Ratburger today. I can't believe we've finished this book. I don't know where the time's gone. Anyway, let's read the final two chapters and then we'll be on to the epilogue. Now the epilogue is the last little part of the story. It's not one of the chapters but it's where David Williams ties up all those little loose ends of the story and finishes it off. So we've got two chapters and then the epilogue and that always comes at the end of the book, the epilogue. So here we go with chapter 31. Rich and famous rat. Sorry, said Tina eventually. Sorry? That's the thing you've never told anyone ever. Uh, yes. Oh, said Zoe. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. You forgive me. Zoe looked at the big girl. She sighed. <sighs> yes, Tina. I forgive you, she said. I'm sorry for being so cruel to you, said Tina. I just, I get so angry. Especially when my dad's, you know, it just makes me want to squash something small. What, like me? I know, I'm so sorry. Tina was actually crying now. It was making Zoe feel a bit uncomfortable. She almost wished Tina would flop on her instead. Zoe put her arms round the girl and hugged her tightly. I know, I know, said the little girl softly. All our lives are hard in one way or another. But listen to me. Zoe rubbed away Tina's tears tenderly with her thumbs. We need to be kind to each other. Stick together, OK? This place is tough enough without you making my life a misery. So, no more flobbing on your head, said Tina. No, not even on Tuesdays. Not even on Tuesdays. Tina smiled. OK. Zoe passed the crusts of bread back to Tina. I don't mind you feeding my little boy. Carry on. Thank you, said Tina. Have you taught him any new tricks? She asked, her face brightening in anticipation. Take him out of his cage and I'll show you, said Zoe. Tina gently opened the door of the cage and Armitage tentatively crawled onto her hand. This time he didn't bite her. Instead, he nuzzled his soft fur against her fingers. Zoe took a peanut from a bag on the shelf as her new friend gently lifted Armitage out on the still dust-encrusted carpet. She showed him the peanut. Armitage promptly stood on his hind legs and did a very entertaining backwards dance before Zoe gave him the nut. He took the nut between his paws and nibbled it greedily. Tina started applauding wildly. That's amazing, she said. That's nothing, replied Zoe proudly. Watch this. With the promise of a few more peanuts, Armitage did a forward roll, a backflip, even spun around on his back as if he were break dancing. Tina couldn't believe her eyes. You should take him on that TV's talent show said Tina. I would love to, said Zoe. He could be the world's he could be the world's very first rich and famous rat. And you could be my assistant. Me? asked Tina, incredulous. Yes, you. In fact I need your help with a new trick I've been dreaming up. Well well uh, I'd love to, spluttered Tina. Then she said, Oh, as if she'd just remembered something. What is it? said Zoe. The end of term talent show. Zoe still hadn't been back to school since her three week suspension started, so she had completely forgotten about the talent show. Oh yes, the one Miss Midge is organising. Midget, yes, we should totally enter Armitage. She's never going to allow me to bring Armitage back into school. He was the reason I got chucked out in the first place. No, no, no. They talked about it in assembly. And it is in the evening and the headmaster has made a special rule. Pets are allowed. 
Well, he's not a dog or a cat, but I suppose he is my pet, reasoned Zoe. Of course he is. Get this. Miss Midge plays the tuba. I heard her practising. It's awful. All the kids reckon she's only doing it because she wants to get off with the headmaster. So, she fancies him, said Zoe. The two girls laughed. The idea of the unusually small teacher playing the unusually large instrument already seemed hilarious, let alone using the low note noted tuba as a method of seduction. I have to see her do that, said Zoe. Me too, laughed Tina. I just need to show Armitage something downstairs quickly. Then we can spend this evening working on a new trick together. I can't wait, replied Tina excitedly. Chapter 32 Actually, too much fudge. Running down the stairs was easier than going up. And before the paint was dry on the side of the van, Zoe was breathlessly showing Armitage the results of her and her father's hard work. Dad climbed into the van and opened the sliding hatch. Zoe had never seen her father looking so happy. Right, so you are my first customer. What would you like, madam? Mmm, Zoe surveyed the flavours. It was a very long time since she'd tasted delicious frozen dessert. She wasn't even sure she'd ever had ice cream since those evenings when Dad would rush home from the factory with some crazy new flavour for her to try. Cone or cup, madam? asked Dad, already relishing his new job. Oh, cone please, replied Zoe. Any particular flavour take your fancy? asked Dad with a smile. Zoe leaned over the counter and studied the long line of mouth-watering flavours. After all those years in the factory, Dad really did know how to make some truly scrumptious ice cream. There was triple chocolate sundae, strawberry and hazelnut swirl, fudge fudge and more fudge, toffee popcorn explosion, caramel and honeycomb crunch, fudge-tastic surprise, tutti frutti looty, raspberry ripple with dark chocolate chunks, Double fudge and coconut cream, cookie and caramel crunch, fudge, fudge, fudge and more fudge, toffee and peanut butter swirl, pistachio and white chocolate, banoffee pie with mega fudge chunks, butterscotch bonbon boom, marshmallow milkshake surprise, quadruple chocolate chip with honey swirls, mini chocolate egg and fruits of the forest, Snail and broccoli. Fudge, 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 fudge. Actually, now too much fudge. It was the most magnificent collection of ice cream flavours in the world, apart from the snail and broccoli, obviously. Mmm, they all look delicious, Dad. It's just too hard to make a decision. Father peered down at his array of ice creams. Well then, I'll just have to give you one of each of them then. Oh, okay, said Zoe, but maybe leave out that snail and broccoli. Her dad bowed. As you wish, madam. His daughter giggled. He piled up her cone with flavour after flavour until it was nearly as tall as she was. With Armitage in one hand, she balanced the impossibly tall ice cream cone in the other. I can't eat all this ice cream on my own, laughed Zoe. She looked up at the tower block and saw Tina looking down at her from the 37th floor window. Tina, come down, shouted Zoe at the very top of her voice. Soon, lots of children were poking their faces out of the windows of their flats, wondering what all the noise was about. All of you, come on down, shouted Zoe. She recognised a few of them but most of them she didn't know. Some of them she had never seen before in her life, even though they were all so closely crammed into this huge, ugly, leaning building together. Come on down, everyone, and help me finish my ice cream. Within seconds, hundreds of kids with dirty but eager little faces were rushing down to the car park to take their turn to have a bite of Zoe's ridiculously tall ice cream. 
After a few moments, the little girl entrusted the tower of ice cream to Tina, who made sure all the kids received their fair share, especially the tiny ones whose little mouths couldn't reach that high. There we go, there's a picture of a huge ice cream. <laughs> At the sound, as the sound of laughter rose and the sun went down, smiling, Zoe broke away from the laughing children and sat alone on a nearby wall. She brushed the litter off the wall and brought Armitage up to her face. Then she gave him a tender little kiss on the top of his head. Thank you, she whispered to him. I love you. Armitage tilted his head and looked up at her with the sweetest little smile on his face. Eek! Eek, 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 he said, which of course, from rat to English, translates as, thank you, I love you too. Well, oh, it's a lovely ending. Shall we see what the epilogue's all about? Here we go then, the epilogue. Thank you, Mrs. Midget, uh, I mean Midge, for the beautiful tuba playing, lied Mr. Grave. It had been truly awful, like a hippopotamus farting. Miss Midge trotted off the stage at the school talent show, unseen behind her huge, heavy instrument. Uh, that way, Miss Midge, called Mr Grave in a concerned voice. Thank you, Headmaster, came a muffled voice just before Mrs Midge crashed into the wings. The tuba sounded better hitting the wall than it had when she was playing it. I'm all right, called Mrs Midge from beneath her ridiculously large tuba. Uh... Uh, right, said Mr Grave. Might need the kiss of life, though. Mr Grave impossibly went even more pale. Next, he said, ignoring the teacher struggling beneath her ridiculous brass instrument. Please welcome the final act to the stage. Zoe! There was a cough from the side of the stage. Mr Grave looked down at his sheet of paper. Oh, um, Zoe and Tina. The audience all applauded. None louder than Dad, who was sitting proudly in the front row. Raj was sitting next to him, clapping excitedly. Zoe and Tina ran on in matching tracksuits and took a bow. Then Tina lay down on the stage as Zoe, was, as Zoe set up what looked like little ramps on either side, which they had made from cereal boxes. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, please welcome the amazing Armitage, said the little ginger girl. At that moment, Armitage sped across the stage, riding a wind-up toy motorbike that Dad had bought from a charity shop and repaired, and wearing a tiny crash helmet. The crowd went wild just at the sight of him, apart from Raj, who covered his eyes in fear. He still was very scared of rodents. You can do it, Armitage, whispered Zoe. When they had practised, he had sometimes missed the ramp and just drove past it, which didn't make for a very exciting show. Armitage whizzed faster and faster as he reached the ramp. Come on, come on, come on, thought Zoe. The little, ramp, the little rat hit the ramp perfectly. Yes! Armitage took off. Armitage flew through the air. Oh no, thought Zoe, he was coming down too soon. He was going to miss the ramp on the other side. Oh no. Down, 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 Armitage fell. Zoe held her breath. And then he landed on Tina's ample tummy, bounced back up into the air and landed on the ramp on the other side. It was a moment of pure and utter joy. It probably even looked deliberate. Oof, said Tina. Eek, said Armitage, bringing his motorbike to a perfect stop. The audience instantly rose to their feet and gave them a standing ovation that went on for ages. Raj even peeked out from behind his hands. Zoe looked at Armitage, then Tina. Then her dad, who was clapping like a madman. She couldn't help but smile. What a lovely ending to our crazy story. 
There's another lovely picture there of Zoe and Armitage. <laughs> oh, I do hope you enjoyed that story. And thank you to everybody that voted for it because I really enjoyed reading it. And as you can see, it's been read lots of times in my house by my children. We will read one more book before the end of term. We've only got three more weeks left. So I'm going to choose a book this time because you've been choosing all the books. So it's teacher's choice. So watch this space and I will be back with you on Monday with a brand new book. In the meantime, um, what I'd like you to do is write a little book review of Ratburger. Say what you liked, what you didn't like, if you'd recommend it to a friend and why, and give it a star rating out of 10. Um, so post any of the reviews you've written online to me. I'd love to see them and we'll pop them on Twitter and share them with the rest of the school. So enjoy the rest of your day year four and I will see you back on Monday for a brand new story. Take care now, bye.